every person beautifully has been created to have their own specificity. So you have your own dreams, you have your own ambitions, you have your own symphony of success. You need to find that. And how do you find it? From deep programming, from the bullshit that everybody else has told you of what it means to be successful. Mm -hmm. You need to stop listening to others and start listening to yourself. But the problem is nobody knows how to listen to themselves. They're scrolling on TikTok, music on loud every day, when they're driving fucking radio turned on, when they're home scrolling on their phones, when they ask for opinions, they ask for opinions from other people, they ain't even asking opinions from themselves. They're yeah. going to a fucking psychologist, asking a psychologist for wisdom and advice on how to live their lives, and they're paying this motherfucker money, and all you are is a client, so might as well keep this person sick as long as possible, or deranged, or in the loop of coming and sitting on the chair. Why? Because hey, they're paying for the fucking mortgage. When was the last time you sat down and defined your symphony of success? What does success look like to you? That's your moment. That's your moment. It's not that all is lost. When you're feeling the most trapped and, and down and nothing can't go right, I feel like those are the moments that define you. Mm -hmm. Those are those character canon moments that are like, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. How do you respond to that? And thinking your way, feeling your way, working your way through those things on the other side. It's like, you know, I don't know who said the saying, but like usually, you know, you're the closest <laughs> to getting what you want. It's always the hardest. It's always the feeling when you're getting ready to, you know, people give up right before they get what they've always wanted to get. People quit and they give up. And I will not be the person who quit before I got what I wanted or what I needed or what I felt I was supposed to have, you know, like, and if that wasn't for me, it wasn't for me. I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep knocking on the door until I get what I feel. That's been something I've always felt since having the name Michael Jordan and understanding that there's another guy out there named Michael Jordan that was the best ever to do something. They're beyond saving because of the worst thing you can possibly be, which is a quitter. Being a quitter is the worst thing you can possibly be. God himself can't make a quitter important because the only reason the place you're trying to get to has value is because it was difficult to reach. If everybody could reach it, there'd be no value. Value is linked to scarcity. The whole point gold is valuable is because it's not everywhere. If it was everywhere, it wouldn't have any value. The reason the place you're trying to reach is valuable is because people can't get there. So if you're the kind of person who quits, you're never going to get there. Mm. Quitters will never make it. And there's a huge subsect of the populace who are basically simply quitters. Mm. I've never in my life seen anyone who's determined to get something not get it. I've never seen somebody who is determined in their heart to get something not get it. The universe and God is so giving and providing. People think it's difficult out here. I disagree. I've never seen someone wake up and say, nah, this is all I care about. This is all I want. Not get it. Everyone who thought that way in fighting was a world champion. Everyone who thought that way about money was rich. I've never seen anyone fail. Bro, I've seen people with no credit score and no job determined to get an R8 manage to get one on finance somehow. I've seen it. If it's all you want, you're gonna get it. I just didn't want that to be my life. Like, I think I just asked myself in that moment and it was weird, like my heart got real hot and I was just looking at this and I was like, is this what I want to walk into every single day I come back into my home? And the answer was no. So it was like, either I'm going to continue to live this type of life and then say, oh, my circumstance and this and that, or I was going to at least try. So that was my thing. I was like, bro, I'm going to at least try. A lot of the times that I quit on other things, it was because I didn't have enough skin in the game. So you don't, you're not invested enough. You don't have enough skin in the game. You're not all in enough. And that's why you quit. So I was like, I'm going to put everything I have into this and not say anything because if I have everything in it, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to not make it work. I have no other choice. So I wired them $10,000, had two pennies left in my bank account, didn't know how I was gonna eat. And that was the first couple of days that I moved to Atlanta. The difference between the wealthy and super wealthy isn't what they do, it's what they don't do. So I was like, what are all the things that I can, I can do in this business? And what are the things that make me the most money in this business? And I looked at those three tasks and it was client outreach, client nurture, and, um, yeah, so those were like top two, client outreach, client nurture, and selling. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna reach out to clients all day, I'm gonna nurture those clients and I'm gonna sell them. And that's all I did for 30 days and that's how I was able to stack up that revenue. Um, and then from there, I was like, all right, 
I feel confident enough to like comfortable enough. And then I was like, let's make this, you know, this move with support by college. And then me and Corey started taking it seriously. And then that first month in, in business, we did $30,000 that month. And I'm going to talk about that too. And then the next month, 65 K. And then from there we scaled it up to a million bucks a month within the next couple of years.